Hello, my name is Imke Lüders. I'm a veterinarian from Germany and I have an appointment at the University of Pretoria at the veterinary faculty here in South Africa. And I got this position for the next two years and our aim is to advance assisted reproduction and reproductive research in wildlife here in South Africa while I'm here. Um, one of our projects is actually based here at the Okutula Conservation Center and it is about lion reproduction. And we use the lion basically as a model species for large fillets and um, they will serve us to actually copy that what we learned from the uh, African lion to more endangered uh, cats like tigers or leopard species. And um, to do so, the first goal was actually to be able to collect and preserve sperm in an easy and field-friendly way. And we have mastered this part already. So the next step now is to look at the female side. And for uh, looking actually at the reproductive side of the female, um, I have a brilliant PhD student from Spain here. She also got a grant to do research for a PhD here at the Ucutula Conservation Center. And she has trained during the last four months um, six lioness um, to voluntarily come into a crush system. And the aim of this training is actually to get the tail out and draw a blood sample from the tail vein, um, which is quite tricky, obviously, in a predator. And we will use these blood samples to monitor hormones of the estrous cycle of the females. So this is one part of the study. And um, today we are actually going to look at um, some of these females. We will um, put them under general anesthesia because we need to do a transrectal ultrasound examination. And to do so, these animals need to be fast asleep, obviously, because otherwise it's getting quite dangerous. So we will put them under anesthesia, we will take blood samples, we will take vaginal smears, we will look at um, the reproductive tract by ultrasound, and this is actually to look at the ovaries and see what functional structures are on these ovaries, and also to get a better idea what reproductive status they are in because they, have, they undergo certain phases during their estrous cycle and we can see that from the ovaries and the um, changes of the cells and the vaginal smears. Well, my name is Isabel Calle Alta and I am a qualified vet from Spain who is currently doing a PhD project at the University of Pretoria under the supervisor of Professor Andre Hansbind and Dr. Imke Luders. Uh, this project focused on wildlife reproduction and specifically on the reproductions of the lions, the African lions. So I'm working with six beautiful lion females that are sit here at Yukutula Conservation Center. So this project will hopefully last three years and its main focus is to study the reproductive cycles of the females, the female lion, and to develop an artificial insemination protocol. To do this we need to determine the hormone levels in blood and fecal samples from the lions. The fecal samples are easy to collect, we just need to go in the enclosure and look for them on the floor but the blood samples are a bit more complicated because we need to take them very frequently and we cannot put the animals under anesthesia every day. So what we have done is to train six lioness so they voluntarily allow to take these samples from them. And this training is done by a positive reinforcement or a positive conditioning training, which basically consists in rewarding the animals every time they do something that we want them to do with a piece of food, which is something very positive for them. That's why it's called positive reinforcement. We started with this training about six or seven months ago, more or less, and to do so, we have had to make some arrangements in the feeding enclosure or the quarantine enclosure where we perform the training. First, we have opened a little hole at the front of the gate where the lioness lays or, or puts their face, 
So we have access to their mouths and we can give them this food without them needing to put weird faces or gestures. We've also installed one little window on the side of the fence where the body is and this little window gives, gives us access to their tails and their back part of the body so I can take pictures, smears, even touch their, their flank. Okay. Okay, let's try. Can you give her something? Okay, count and then I'll give. And then we've also installed five wooden poles. So we have built a passage between the fence and these poles where the lioness can walk in, lay between the fence and the poles, and then in case she doesn't want to cooperate anymore, she can either continue walking in front or towards the exit, or only move backwards, but she cannot try to bite or try to see what's going on out there. So it's more or less safety measurements. To describe the reproductive cycle of the female, we need to get as many samples as possible, so we can check every day or every two days how the hormones and their behavior may vary. So that's why we have chosen Ukutula as our base for this study, since we have found here a stable population and control population who has been used to human contact or at least to human presence and that makes our lives easier when we are talking about this conditioning. We obviously, to make this all, all whole procedure to work, we need the cooperation of the animal, so if they are keen to approach the feeding enclosure or the quarantine enclosure and come closer to us because they know that we are going to feed them. On the other hand, if we try to do this in the wild, the situation would be way different because we wouldn't be able to take samples so often from the animals and we obviously would need to put them under anesthesia every time we wanted to collect samples from them. So it will be more difficult if not impossible. However, taking the samples here and analyzing all these lioness here, we can try to extrapolate or to see if that can be extrapolated to what happens in the nature, in the wild. Well, and now we're going to take all the samples that we have collected in the field and we're going to process them at Ukutula Conservation Center so we can take them later to the University of Pretoria and analyze them in the lab.